just keeping it real. Welcome to the Real Word Outdoor Podcast. I'm here with my good friend and pastor, uh, Warren Hill, and we're going to be talking about forgiveness, uh, and more particularly unforgiveness, and what um, we need to do about that in the body of Christ. It is a major stronghold in a lot of people's lives. And so um, I, the first scripture that popped out to me that we were going to read um, and then jump right into this was where Jesus was on the cross in Luke 23, 34. The first words from Jesus' mouth was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Very first thing Jesus said. That should show us how important it is to him, the forgiveness for us, and that we in turn should forgive others. I think that's one of the one of the problems in, in the Christian world, Christian belief, is that we, we hold grudges and we won't, we won't forgive when we get hurt. I mean, I wonder why it's so hard to forgive knowing how much we've been forgiven for. Well, I, I think pride has a, a, a little bit to do with that. And I, I think that we don't look at our sins the way we look at others. You know, one of my favorite verses is First John 1, 9, that, uh, that we, we've all sinned and come short of God's glory. But he says that if we confess our sins, that he'll forgive us and cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. I try to remember that as talking to me, and it means that we got to show that to others too. You know, um, one of the major things that I've seen in my own life and, and in other people's lives is when we say we forgive people, we on the surface we can say, hey, I forgive this person, and we could really mean it, but there's still a part of us that doesn't want anything to do with that person, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, I, I'm, you sure. know, yeah. yeah. And I know that if somebody's toxic and they're bad for you, you know, we don't necessarily need to be in contact with them. But I also think that's a good excuse or a bad excuse sometimes rather that the enemy uses in people's lives to say, well, they're just, they're not worth, they're worthy of me hanging around because they're such a bad person. You ever? Anything? Yeah, well, I think if they're, if they're going to, if you can't handle what they're doing and you can't, it's going to pull you into a deeper situation. Right. I think you have to get to where you're strong enough to handle that before you can be there. But I don't think we should just shun them because they've hurt our feelings and and because we just don't want to be around them. Yeah. You know, I think that's a lot of what we do is just because we don't agree with them. And, you know, God wants us to make an impact on people. And the only way we can do that is through the Holy Spirit leading us and guiding us and, and being around some people. Yeah, because, you know, you got people that, like, you know, rape, um, People that's been, you know, they can forgive, they should forgive at some point to move on and get deliverance from from that. But that anything that's an awful uh, sin or, or, or attack on you, they don't want to go right back and hang out with the rapists. You see what I mean? I, well, I, I wouldn't either. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's I, I was more talking about right. Um, things that we dislike about people that right. brings a whole different level is when you've been physically mentally yep. hurt by someone and uh, sometimes when you forgive people you can't go right. back and be a part of that you, you just you just can't even if you you have to forgive because the forgiveness kills you mm -hmm. unforgiveness kills you i think but I, I don't know that i could go hang out uh, uh, with some some situation like that me neither and see and I did a, a video a while back, and it, I understood where you were coming from. <clears throat> That's where this video was coming from, a place of when you forgive, you, you don't need to shun the person. You know, you need to have true forgiveness in your heart and, and not have that thing in there that says, I just don't want to ever see them again because God's dealing with your heart. He's looking at the heart. Right. And then somebody brought up a good point. Well, what about the person that's been raped? Or what about the person that's had somebody that's very toxic in their life that's always hurting them or trying to have there's a point where you have to cut certain people off in your life. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think God is, that's a negative thing. I think it, you know, when God, we, he sees us doing it, I still think he's looking at our heart. Uh, do we truly forgive them, but yet we don't really want to be around them? If you truly forgive them, then I don't think there's an issue with not being around a toxic person. But I think if we say, well, I forgive them, but I don't want to be around them, um, 
we need to make sure our hearts right. Am I making any sense? I know. Yeah. I kind of. Well, and, and it's it's totally different being around somebody that's really physically hurt you yeah. to the point. Uh, even if you forgive, you still don't want to be around somebody that really hurts you. Right. That, I would think uh, that's something that the Lord would have to really work in your heart. You know, the, one of the definitions of let, uh, of uh, forgiveness in the New Testament from the Greek is let go. Oh, really? Let go. Mm-hmm. And um, to me, there's some things like growing up is, and, um, and I had some tough situations in my life growing up, especially with family. And to let go is one of the hardest things that I've ever done. They go with the bitterness, the, right? The, the, the hurt, the pain. And I can imagine with that instance that you're talking about, that would that would be, you know, even when you get to the point to, okay, Lord, I got to let it go because it's killing me. You got to help me with this, and that's the only way you can let it go, I think, and with help in other ways. But you still sometimes you you just can't be a part of that world of, of, of being around that person or those persons that has truly physically hurt you. you know? Now, God can get you to that point. There's no doubt. If God can forgive me, He can forgive the thief on the cross, and He can forgive others. And, for what they did for him, and he can get us there, but it's 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 only through him helping us do that. I believe I believe it has to be a supernatural uh, for something as heinous as you you described there, you know, or forgiving. I, I really believe it's only something that God can do supernaturally to help you with that. And I, I think we have he, he'll put a desire in us if he wants to work through that. But I know he wants us to forgive people like he forgives us, no doubt. But he has to help us because we're we're fallible, <laughs> we're human. And we come short. Yeah, that's that's one of the reasons I wanted to touch on that because it's a it, it, it's a um, it's a way the enemy can can keep us in a state of bitterness. Yeah. If we use that excuse for well, they're just not a good person, I don't need to be yeah. around them. But and so, but we don't really forgive from our heart. Right. Um, and that's a big difference between being physically, mentally abused and hurt. And um, just because you don't like somebody, yeah. But God still can work that out. Right. I believe the Bible teaches that that you know He can work it out. But it, it takes Him to do that, and with, with even human help, you know, coaching us and, and helping us as we go through it. Yeah, I know when He uh, when He saved me, and I and mean, you were saved. There there are things we've done that offended God greatly. Yeah. Still, we mean. don't. Yeah, <laughs> and we <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> And we don't even really know the depth of what we've done toward him. Right. But yet he not only forgives us, he wants to be with us. Right. Yeah, fellowship, that's right. More than we ever know. Mm-hmm. You know, the closest I think we can come to is the fellowship that he wants with us is what we want with our kids and our grandkids and our wives and our spouses. You know, and that still don't come close to how much right. he wants to be with us. I mean, that's why he saved us, you know. He loved us so much that you know, he, he went to the cross for us, and we, we can't grasp that, you mm-hmm. know. That was, you're talking about a heinous crime now. That, <laughs> that, that was painful, you know. And he did that for me and you and for anybody else that's lived out there. Uh, he wants, he loves, loves us that much. And it's hard to grasp that with us. And that forgiveness, like you mentioned, to start with in the Scripture, when he told them, he said, Father, forgive them, but they don't know what they're doing. You know, that's pretty, pretty... Uh, Awesome with him hanging around the cross like that yeah. in a lot of physical pain. The very ones that mocked him, beat him, spit on him, right. lied on him, right. he was talking about them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, the ones that did that. Exactly. Yeah. And all down the line. You know, it, it's hard for me and you and as humans to grasp that, even uh, without without the Holy Spirit's help and, and the Word of God helping us to, to do that. But then we've got to fight the pride in the and, and, and not only that, the other side is the hurt and pain. Yeah. But yeah. that's real. It's real. It is real. Um, another thing that leaked out to me when we were talking about forgiveness was another scripture I wanted to read. It says, uh, where Jesus said in Matthew 6, 14, 15, he said, if you forgive man their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. That's a that's a really sobering scripture, especially when you look at 
the stronghold of unforgiveness in, in the body of Christ. And I, I think what we're shedding light on here, trying to shed light on, is this is such a major uh, stronghold of the enemy and it's masked, it's covered by, well, they hurt me, they're not worthy of my friendship, or they hurt me, and I'm okay, I just don't want to ever see them again. And I, It's a very tricky thing because God's not going to violate his scripture. And Jesus said, if you don't forgive, I can't forgive you. So that would definitely be a place the enemy would attack us, you know, directly and say, I, I need to set up the stronghold in, in your lives. Right. And so... Um, do you got any thoughts on that? You ever considered that? Uh, that, that gets pretty deep there. Yeah. And, uh, you, you know, we, we definitely, our nature is, is more of a sin nature than it is a, a nature that God wants us to have, that He died for, and that He's, he's, he's given us salvation for, and it's a work in progress every day. But we want forgiveness, no doubt. But we sure don't want to share it with Him with others the way we want it back from the Lord. Um, and I, I think I think that's a lot of what he's wanting to do is make us more like him in, in what you're talking about there too. You know, he expects us to be more like him and he's willing to help us with that if we're willing to follow him. But um, I think that's one of the things that is really hurting God's people and has always is not willing to forgive others the way God forgives us. You know, on an everyday basis. I know I had to deal with it. My granddaddy taught me when I was young. I, I really, and I, I, I'm ashamed to say this, but I really had a hatred for someone very strong. And they hurt me bad. Um, and uh, I've struggled with it somewhat all my life. But my granddad told me, he took me to, to the Bible. And he told me, he said, this morning, if you're a Christian, you claim to be a Christian, you cannot hold this against that person. It don't mean... You've got to like what they do. You don't mean you've got to, you know, to, to embrace that. He said, but you've got to forgive them for the hurt that they've done for you, because because God God tells us that we need to forgive others the way He forgive us. But also, uh, you've got to be able to live your life, and you'll, you'll have anger in your life all your life if you don't. And that was at an young age. I was, at a young age, I was still a teenager. Wow. And when wow. he shared that, I man, I've never forgot that. He's taught me a lot of things. But that's one of the things, and he carried me to the. The, to that same scripture that, that you're, you shared and, and showed me that I cannot hold that grudge against them. And the only way that I can truly turn it loose and, is, is to let go, let God have it. And ask God to forgive me for the grudge that I feel. Now, what what was the way that might have been the answer to what you just said, but um, how did you overcome the feelings toward that person? You know, it's one thing to say I forgive them, it's another thing to have all that. When, I, when I'm still, when I'm around them, yeah. and they say something, still it triggers. Does it? And only by the grace of God. Uh, but I, I, the Holy Spirit helped me understand what my granddaddy was talking about. Okay? And I knew that I had to do that, or I would never, and this was way before I ever thought God was going to call me in, uh, into the ministry or anything. This, this was just for me to function, you know. Uh, but I had to, I just went to God and I started praying, God forgive me for holding this grudge, and I, I began to pray for that person, that God would save them, because that, they were not saved at the time. They got saved later on in life, and, and, and have turned their life around, and I'm so thankful for that. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I would pray for them. And when you start praying for somebody, and not that God would hurt them, <laughs> but like Jesus did, Father, forgive them, your heart starts changing over time. And it doesn't mean that you don't go back some days when mm-hmm. they say something or, or do something or hit you. But man, it, it, it's the freedom that you get after you continue and you pray it with a you pray it with a faithful, true heart. And God knows our hearts. That's the good thing about God. He knows He knows our motives. So He knows if you're just giving Him lip service <laughs> or if you're praying. And and that's that's what Granddaddy told me. He says you you need to pray for them truly because they're lost. And he was right, you know. So I, I don't know if that uh, clarifies yeah. that or not. That, that's powerful, because yeah. And I still pray. Not, not now that they're saved, I still pray that God would move them closer and help help them be where they need to be. I, I pray for them every every day still, and that's something that God did. I I can't take any credit for that. It's just He broke my heart for that, and He showed me that that could be me very quick, very easily. 
You know, I think it's only God can go in and surgically, spiritually remove that bitterness. You know? That's right. If we surrender to Him like you did, then He can act. But there's really some some hurt is so deep, so deep. that you can't. You can't do it yourself. No, you can't. There's no way. There's no it's way. there. You got to have help, and and, and that's that's the human nature. When you get hurt, like some of the things you mentioned earlier, specific things, you don't get over that. You know, you, you have to have help. Yeah. Uh, and I think the Lord, the, the Lord will help you when you turn to Him. There's no doubt. He tells us that the Bible he tells us to seek Him. He tells us to, to cast our cares upon Him. Um, he puts people in our way and can counsel us, and like my granddad, you know, and, and some others I, that that helped me with that. That knew that I was struggling, and uh, you know, he uses people to help us. You know, but we got to count on him. We got to cast our cares. That cast, I think, is a verb. Uh, yeah. you you got to you got to do it. And a lot of us, and me included, will throw them at him and give them to him, and then we pick them up. <laughs> it's like getting up from the altar and picking them back up and going back to the seat. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and we're human, and that's no excuse. But we we all he tells us we all come short. And I take that seriously. I think I don't think that I, even as as a pastor of, of, of almost twenty nine years, twenty nine years. Yeah, we're getting old. Yeah, almost twenty nine years. Uh, I still think I am uh, the most undeserved person on this planet for what God has done. And that I'm, I'm the least of the ones that's in the building on Sunday morning. Unless I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm the least. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But I, but I mean, that, I that's not putting that. yourself down. That's just no, no. knowing who God is right. and that everybody's in the same boat. Nobody's higher than anybody. We all have issues and we all struggle. And every one of us in some ways struggle with unforgiveness. Well, I do. I mean, I'll be honest. And, yeah. and I'm going to tell you, mine comes from betrayal. Um, yeah. And that's a hard one. Yeah. Um, you know, I mentioned uh, the, in the beginning people that, women that are raped and things like that. Because I had that brought, when I, when I did that video, People are like, well, yeah, you forgive, but you don't. You don't need to be around toxic people. Or people that hurt you. I agree. You don't want to be around, right. and you can't be around right. people that are hurting you. Right. But the issue is, God still wants you to forgive from your heart. No doubt. And so it's got to be the first place. That's 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 the whole issue. So put in a little bit. Um, I don't want to say uh, it's, it's a, well. It is not quite as a, quite as rough. Of what I just mentioned, but betrayal when somebody church hurt, yeah. church uh, people that you grow up with, people that you look up to, people that you think are godly people, when they do things that you feel betray your trust in them, or or you know churches split and that kind of thing, it causes a lot of hurt. Yeah. And what people do a lot of times is they'll leave and go start a church, or either just go to another church. But they never really deal with the hurt, That's exactly right. and they just say, "Well, I forgive them, but I don't want to see them no more." That's what kind of what I was. Right. And not only that, they talk about them. Oh yeah. Because the hurt is so bad, they That's put their way the church down. And see what people, what we don't understand is Christians, as people hear us, they, 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 they listen. Up, yeah. They listen to us, you know. And uh, and when we're sitting around and we're complaining about God's people. You know, whether they're saved or not, that's on them, between them and God. But if they claim to be Christians and, and, and we get that hurt, to me, I've been in and out of, uh, I, I come through a church split when I was a teenager and it seems like that the Lord has okay. kept me in, in work, in work um, that has been working with churches for uh, revitalization uh, or helping them transition. And, um, I see that, that hurt and it's real and it's painful and, and you have to work through it. And I, I think that's one of the things that hurts, uh, pushes people away from church that, oh, yeah. that don't know Christ. Yeah. Is sometimes, you, you know, our actions, I have learned the hard way, <laughs> our actions are sometimes more powerful than our words, mm -hmm. you know, as far as serving Christ. Yeah. And I, I know I broke Christ's heart several times with some of my actions. 
it's hard battling anger, bad, battling hurt. It, it's all, it's all hard. So, and I'm, I'm kind of putting you, not really on the spot, because you can say I don't know, but I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> how? When you, when you're portrayed by people that you trust, and those, let's just put it this way: they're good people. They just make mistakes most like everybody are. else does. Right? Exactly. Right. We're all human. Thought process, yeah. Unfortunately, sometimes. Is there a way to help you look past that, move on, and still be friends with those people? Yeah. 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 I've had several situations uh, in the ministry over the last 29 mm -hmm. years where I've, I've been uh, had some hard situations like that, where I was opposed or people didn't agree with certain things. And, and the Lord... You go back to what my granddaddy taught me. You pray, you pray, you pray. You seek God's face, you read the Word, and ask Him, and you pray for those folks. Because with me in a church like that, I can't. I got to do what the Word tells me. I got to do what the Holy Spirit leads. But I want to take everybody with me. Oh uh, yeah. You, you know, and and it's not my plan. I, I want to do the Lord's plan, and, and His plan is that we all worship Him that we all serve Him, we all know Him, and then we all worship Him and serve Him, and that we work together to share the gospel, whatever. And I think each church is unique that He calls uh, in, in the work of the Lord. But to do that, we all have to be on the same page. Jesus has to be our focus. And I think that's really one of the biggest problems with us as Christians. And yeah, I'm a Christian. I want Him to bless me. And I want Him to bless me the way I want Him to bless me. Right. And, you know, it's my mess, and I want Him to bless it. Right. And and it's wrong. After we be, after we are saved and forgiven for our sins, that we should, uh, uh, you know, uh, pay pay penalty for that the rest of our life against Him. You know, He's forgiven us as far as from east is the west. Uh, there are consequences of our sins, but He forgives us if we ask Him, if we repent. And repent means you turn and go His way, not your way. But going back to that, and most of the time, good people. Uh, think this is the way we go and, and, and God's got a way that he wants us to go individually and as a church Yeah, and, and I think that's where you have to get your focus back on him and the only way to do that is prayer and and reading God's word and, and other things that, that push you to him uh, and, and that's the only way that we can do that and I've seen God do that I've seen him bring churches together uh, that uh, that truly sold out to him. Not that we were perfect, but but the the, the motive and uh, the drive behind everything was to please him. And and I, and there's some of the churches that are still doing that that they hadn't had a rocky spot along the way. We all we're human. Mm -hmm. we, we're we're flesh. We're going to have rocky spots. Uh, and, uh, but the focus has got to be on him, David. I mean that's it. It's, it's got to be on Jesus. Either he's our savior and he's our Lord, or he's not. And a lot of times we want the salvation part, and we want the blessing parts, but we don't want to do the God parts, the part that He wants, the holiness part that He wants to instill in us, to be more like Him. Because Jesus says, He didn't say to go and follow so-and-so. He says, you follow me. He told the apostles, you follow me. We're supposed to take up our cross, deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Him. We don't want to deny ourselves either. When you, when you forgive somebody, you're denying yourself uh, that right to hold anger. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that from experience. That's what I was doing because I enjoyed at sometimes the anger that I held. I felt comfortable in that. We do that in churches a lot, unfortunately. And we think we're right. And we may be right in jest, in the argument or the disagreement. But when it comes to the Lord, he's all right. He's right. Whatever he says. <clears throat> That's a powerful statement because you, you said you, you, you can become comfortable. Yeah, in your anger. Yeah, you get used to hurt. You can control that. You can control, you know, what you how you feel, what you think, and you hold on to that. Yeah. But re to relinquish that, you, you're you're no longer in control. You're saying, no Lord, yeah. you know. And he may have you go to that person yeah. and have exactly. a relationship. <laughs> he's, had, he's had me do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean... But the one I described to you, he made me do that. And if you're honest, you know you don't want to do it. Right. I mean, you flesh don't, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying he'll make you do that, but he made me do oh, that. Oh, I've had to do that. But I had to do that for me. Yeah. He made me do it for me. Yeah. Yeah. But see, God's way is always right. Oh, yeah. My way is not, you know, unless it's his way. 
You know, we started with the scripture. Jesus said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. But you know who we ever looked or who I ever looked? Who's that? We talked about people that spit on him, mocked him, laughed at him on the cross. Judas betrayed him. <laughs> and he caught him and he still knew he was going to betray him. There you go. So betrayal, somebody betrays us, Jesus knows what that feels like. He knows it. By exactly. his inner circle. Yeah. And the thing about him, he knew it when he caught him. Yeah. Can you imagine? You know, when he washed his feet. Yeah. But see, he was strong enough. His his focus was on the Father's will. That that's that's the that, big difference. He his focus. He had no other motive. And love. Yeah. That's and exactly right. He, he had love, love for yeah. him. He he even though he knew what he was going to do, I believe he he was. Oh yeah. He, he gave him that chance. You know, he gives us a choice. If, if Judas would have repented, I believe he'd have been. Saved. I believe he would have if he'd have repented. Yeah. Because there's the. The only, from what I understand in the Word of God, there are only one thing that He will not forgive us from, and that's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. That means, from what I understand, that you will not accept His invitation for salvation. You won't repent. You won't ask for forgiveness. You're going to do it your way. You so they're believing Him. So, for the folks listening, there is a place a person can go where there is no forgiveness. Yeah, from God. If you don't ask, if you don't ask him for forgiveness, he's he's not going. He he he'll, he'll give you your choice. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's he turns us right. over to our own reprobate minds. Mm -hmm. But I thought about that. You know, Judas uh, was kind of the beginning of where everything started going south. You know, he had a whole different motive. Than, and, and see, that's how we get sometimes as people and in churches. We, you know, he he had a he had a persona of being one of the yeah. disciples. A lot of people in church like that. Right. And, you know, to me, that's one of the most, um, that's, that's one of the things that makes me sorry more than anything else is, is if you don't know Christ. I mean, because you, you die and you spend eternity in hell away from Him. And to me, that's the saddest decision you ever make is not to know Christ. It, it is. And, and He's provided the way. And he's, he, he, he gives us invitations. He, he helps us see things through his nature, through his word, through other people. He's, he's done everything he can do for us. He leads that up to us. So. Isn't it amazing how he gives us a choice? Yeah. And we, we have a choice whether to stay, um, to, to forgive or not. Now, some of that's not easy. It's kind of like the, well, I, I like this scripture right here, David. Uh, uh, in Luke 23, 39, it says there was one criminal who was hanging, uh, was hanged, and he was blaspheming. And then you had another criminal on the other side of him that uh, said, Lord, remember me when you come into, when you come into your paradise, your kingdom. And, uh, you know, he got on the other guy for, for uh, blaspheming. Well, one of them made a choice. Both of them made a choice. One of them made a choice for him. And then the Lord said, you'll be with me today in paradise. And he gives us that same choice. And see, the Lord loved him enough, just like you said about Judas, if Judas would have asked, I know we're saying if, but if he would have asked, I believe he would forgive him just like that thief on the cross. I do too. Knowing, the love, on the cross. knowing the love of God, there, I, I know, I believe in my heart, that if he would have repented, God would, but, you know, it's... I, that's something I think I'd, I'd love to, to talk about too, is the love of God. Because, man, it's oh, hard. Man. It's hard to wrap your your head around forgiveness the way Jesus does it, and it's hard to wrap your hands around how much He loves us. There's you know? a scripture I had it. And I, I've been looking for it, but you, it's it's where He says, "Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, as Christ has forgiven us." Right. If we're kind, if we if we make a, a mental or a choice to be kind and grateful. Gratitude is huge. And thankful yeah. for what God's done for us. We think about the things He's forgiven us for. It'll help us look at others that hurt us or betray us or whatever it may be. Yeah. Say, so, you know, as much as God has forgiven me for, I'm going to forgive this person. Not because they deserve my forgiveness, but I didn't right. deserve forgiveness. That's it's it. like, in other words, it's His forgiveness. Right. It is. And it is, and he's he's made us to where I believe if we hold grudges like that, we're miserable right now. Oh yeah. Right? Right. Even if we're comfortable in, in in that, and even if somebody has really hurt us, I mean, I, I, most of the time God will make me go ask for forgiveness if I know I've hurt somebody. 
Uh, if I don't know, I can't. I can't know. Uh, but usually he'll show me. But when somebody hurts me, there's many times that I just have to deal with it with him and let it go. You know, sometimes he'll send me to him. But um, we just got to, that's the only way we can make it and have a true peace is, is with him helping us let that go. Where do we ever approach or hang out or do anything with him? There was somebody um, that I, I had offended them and didn't know it. Yeah. Um, and when I found out they were offended with me, I didn't really respect it. I didn't think I said, I didn't do nothing to them. This was before I was saved too. And I thought it was silly for them to hold, to be like they were. And so I'd go to football games or whatever, and I'd run into them, and they'd look the other way, wouldn't want to acknowledge me. And I would, I would antagonize them, make them look at me, make them talk to me, just, just to be a jerk. Yeah. Well, after I got born again, um, the Lord started dealing with me about cleaning, that's cleaning and things up, you know, in my life. And, and that person was brought to my attention that you need to go to this person and ask them to forgive you for the way you right. pressed on that, you know, and antagonized them. Because that's just the way I was, was when I was a sinner, you know, or I was doing stuff like that. But anyway, I said, all right, Lord, I'll do it when I run into them. <clears throat> well, I went to the washerette to wash my truck off after deer hunting one, one evening. And uh, the guy was in the next stall, washing his car off. And I said, "All right, this is it." And the Lord said, "This is it's time." <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to do it because honestly, I didn't know what he was going. I said, "He might cuss me out." He, you know, I mean, I've been a jerk. You know, I was. I, I didn't do anything to him, but once I found out he had a problem with me, I was trying to instigate it. You know, make him. I guess just being a, a jerk but anyway I come around to Ben he saw me and his face changed like what's what's about to happen here and I went up to him and I said I want you to know that I'm sorry for what I did that you're offended with me about right. I didn't realize it at the time but I'm also sorry for the way I've acted towards you right. and I want you to forgive me I got saved and I went to tell him how I got saved mm -hmm. this guy we had a church moment, right? We had a church right there, and it was just awesome, and, and we become great friends. And, you know, we started going to revivals together. We would actually ride together to revivals. And um, so I had a strong bond with him after that, and he bought me my first book after I started preaching. He gave me the first book anybody ever gave me. Besides the Bible, it was a book on Elijah. So the book that he gave me, he's gone on to be with the Lord. He's passed away. Um, but I still got the book he gave me, and... Um, the friendship that we had, um, and all of that came through reconciliation. Right. You know. Yeah. Well, that's what God wants. We we have to remember that we, like we talked started out with, we're we all come short, all of us, and, and we need as Christians, we need to be willing to reconcile. I mean, that's a big deal. That that needs to happen in our personal life, like you and that gentleman did. Mm -hmm. You know, and. It needs to happen in, in, in among Christians all over. We, we're, we're different. We're, I don't want to agree on how to do anything. Right. You know, a lot of times, I, I know my wife and I, we, we disagree on a lot of things, you know, in general, just simple things, how to do things, you know. And I've had to understand that I, I we see things different, different, but God put us together because uh, she can teach me a lot of things that I need to do that I need work on and, and hopefully vice versa. We have to understand that they're always right. We're always wrong, man. Right? I mean, that's the secret. Well, I, I probably use yeah. <laughs> uh, if, if if I'm not reading the Bible, <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. But uh, uh, no, I don't say that. I don't say that jokingly. I, I say that uh, sincerely. Well, again, I got another little instance here to happen. I think it's be good to throw in here. Um, I was in a revival one time, and it was kind of tight. Uh, there weren't a whole lot. You could just feel the tension, you know. It was like the second or third night. It was just a lot of tension, and but nothing that really broke loose in it in the church until a couple come forward, and both of them had tears in their eyes, and they came, and, and the husband looked at me and said, I have not been faithful, hmm. and I want to be forgiven. I want her to forgive me. And I looked at her like, oh, boy. And when I looked at her, she said, I want to forgive him. So they both came with a heart 
to forgive. And I'm going to tell you, after that, when that happened, the, the church just, God started really just it moving in there. Yes, sir. That's the, the power of forgiveness. Yes, sir. I, I had an instant happen where I offended somebody in a front of a group of people. And I, immediately the Lord convicted me. What I said, what I, what I said was right. How I said it was my attitude. Yeah. And all, and I called, I had to call that person. I mean, I couldn't, they got gone after that. I had to call them that night and I, and I, I told them I wanted to come by and apologize to them. They said, no, we talk on the phone. I said, I'm not upset. I said, well, thank the Lord you're not upset. I said, but I am. I, I, I was wrong the way I answered you in front of people. And I said, the Lord has really convicted me. And I said, I called to apologize to you. And I said, I, should, I could have told you could have asked for a meeting or I could have said something different, you know, how we, you know, just not say anything mm -hmm. until later. And she wholeheartedly received the, the apology. And she says, I was not offended. You know, I'm, I'm good. And I said, but one more thing. I said, there was a lot of people that heard me. I got to stand up and apologize to the church on how I acted because there was a good number of people who heard me. And she said, no, 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 no. <laughs> I said, well, I got to. I said, I'm going to have to do that because I'm the one that seen. I'm the one that was wrong. And so I had to apologize in front of the church uh, for offending. Not that they required that, but God required that for me. And I apologized. I, I told them I had to apologize to the person. And I wanted to apologize to the group of people that were standing there that had seen me act like that. And, man, you know, God broke me that morning and then he, it, he you know it eventually just it just made a whole different different atmosphere and I, I hated to be the uh, you know the, the subject of the of a, a skit mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was real you know but it was visual and uh, you know God does require us to do things like that if I know I've offended somebody I will I feel like I have to go especially God, God will convict you absolutely if you're close and and uh, and uh, it, it's just it's not always easy. Now, if you don't know you offended somebody, you offended somebody, you can't do anything about it. So well, don't the scriptures as Christians we should don't the scriptures say that if you know your brother has an alt, you're supposed to go to him, right. and if he doesn't hear you, you bring a friend back, or bring another brother back or sister back, with whichever the case is. The Bible says, I believe you bring, then you bring it to the church, right. So God's not cool with us knowing somebody has a problem with us. Right. Even if it's, we haven't done, or, you know, if we know they got a problem, we're supposed to go to them. Right. Yeah. And, and, and try to, try to settle it. I think that's what he wants us to do. I think we have to go with the right heart and spirit. Cause mm -hmm. like you did, if you'd have, if you'd have oh, went yeah. for that facetious spirit that you had right. before, right. it, it would have been nothing. Right. And sometimes even when you go with the right spirit, but you, you're going with the Holy Spirit leading you, and you're going with the right uh, heart and the right motives. Sometimes people still will not accept it, but that's then you've done all you can do. So there are times when people won't accept your your right. apology, and that's something we probably ought to touch on too, because it's almost like you want to be released from the hurt and the bitterness and all this, and then you say, "Okay, I'm gonna obey God. I'm gonna do what God's telling me to do." You humble yourself and you go to this person. And then they completely reject you. Right. They completely say, no, I don't want nothing to do with you or, or, you know, hey, I've already passed on, look past you. And, you know, been insulting. Then you got a whole nother right. thing to deal with from that. But, and, and it can hurt you and cause you to go back in and, and revert back to, to holding a grudge or, or, or being angry. But what, what we have to do, and I've had that happen to me, um, both of the situations where they just blew me off and said, you know, I don't want to talk about it. Or, you know, I, no, no way, you know, or I don't know what you're talking about. But I, I just, it disappointed me. And, but I went with the right motives and I, I just went back to the Lord. I said, well, I don't know what else to do. You know? Well, it's all for you now. Right. And, and uh, it, it, it is, but it still, you feel bad because you want to rectify that situation with a person. I think one of the things is my nature that bothers me if somebody's got a problem with me and they don't like me. And I, I can't get them to forgive me or, you know, or understand. It's one of the things that nags at me. It's yeah. like, 
you know, this person doesn't really understand me and really understand I'm sincere. It, it's one of the things that matters. But you have to get to a place where you just say, look, as long as I'm right with God, I, I want them to, to, to be okay with everything. And I'm here if they want to ever talk. But I've got to move on. Yes, sir. And as long as I'm right with God, that's really all that matters, right? It, it is, and as long as you've done what he's asked right. you to do. Yeah. Right. But maybe this is a good place to, to, to stop this scripture right here. I don't okay. know. I'm yeah. going to read this Go scripture. Read. The Lord just Amen. showed me. Uh, I can see it better on the screen. It says in, in Luke 17, 1 through 4, Then he said to the disciples, It's impossible that no offense should come, but woe to him for whom it does come. It would be better for him for a milestone were hung around his neck if he were thrown into the sea and that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourself. Your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day, seven times in a day returns to you, saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. That sort of sums it up. So, seven times a day. Every time seven also mentioned, that's, that's sort of infinite, isn't it? It is. You know, that's funny, amazing, really, that you brought that up, because that was kind of what I was been digging through my papers here. Look, Matthew 18, mm -hmm. um, what caught my eye on that was the parable that Jesus went on to give them, mm -hmm. that the man that owed a lot right. was brought before the king, and he forgave him. But then that same guy goes back to somebody owed him and he had him throw it into squeeze it. Yeah. And then the king come back and said, You were wicked. You know. That's that speaks to us right there. And that that's that that's unfortunately a lot of our human nature. Yeah. And I mean that's what we, we want to do instead of forgiving seven times seven. He says in Colossians uh, three there, verse uh, thirteen, we're supposed to be bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you must do. These are some of the scriptures my granddad used to me uh, 30 years ago or more. You can't argue. 50 years ago, I guess. And, and even as Christ forgave you, think about that. How yeah. That's complete forgiveness. Yeah. And I sure appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, un undeserved. And so we have to get to that point that we just can't do it on our human human side. We we have got to really trust the Lord to help us. And he will. I, I know he will. Just like he did you with, with that guy. That day. Oh, yeah. You know? and, and God's timing is everything, too. We, we can't... Uh, you know, I, I've learned over the years that God has a timing and I have a timing. And my timing is either too quick or too slow. His timing is always right. I'll tell you something else about God when it comes to that. He's patient. Yeah. Oh, God, more than we ever know. He will peel you like an mm -hmm. onion. And he'll take his time doing it. Mm -hmm. And he's still peeling me um, on things that's unforgiveness and betrayal and bitterness that I don't even know is there. He, he'll, he, when I think, okay, I finally, right. I'm got, and then he'll peel another layer. Right. But he sees it. Yeah. God's in constant work on this. Right. In a good way. Yeah. But it hurts sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It does. But, you know, he, he expects us to, to follow him, deny ourselves up our cross and follow him and to me that that's uh, you, you can't be done without his help and, and your true desire that he gives us to follow him we, we got to hold on to that and keep our eyes on him the Bible says if, if we regard iniquity in our heart the Lord will not hear us right. and I think unforgiveness is probably one of the, a, a major reason a lot of prayers are not answered and we don't draw close to God because we hold on to that stronghold because if we if if we notice in our lives as a Christian um, that no matter where we go or what if we've got something in our life even no matter we trying to shake it or whatever the Holy Spirit will keep His finger uh, it just keeps coming to your heart and to your mind you know if there's something there that you've got to get somebody you got to deal it, with it'll it. keep coming to you till He has you deal with it the way He wants you to you know I, I, He has done that with me I believe He does. So the cap, the summarize of this thing is, if 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 we have unforgiveness, and and all of us struggle with it from time to time, and people are listening, there may be somebody that's listening right now, and 
and you pretty much just we read their mail and they're like, yeah, this is me, this is for me, this this devotion uh, has spoke to me. What would be your advice or to that person, biblically speaking, to to start moving in the right direction? I, I think to hopefully they continue to read the the Bible because God's going to speak to them. Uh, I, I know when He's speaking to me about some a problem, a sin or an issue in my life, especially a sin in my life, or an attitude in my life, which is a sin most of the time. When I read the Word, the Holy Spirit will convict because the Word is going to cut you, you know, and you keep reading the Word even though it's hard to, and keep praying and asking God to help you with that um, because you just can't do it on your own. Uh, you know, you just got to spend time with Him. I think, I think one of the things that the majority of people that say they're Christians miss out on is time alone with God, you know. And I, I've learned to sit and wait on God, you know. It tells us to be still and listen to God. And uh, I, I think those are several things that you must do, you know, and just ask God. You know, if you truly want God's will, you tell him that you want his will done, and he'll show you how to get it done. So just spend that time with him, and he'll make you more like him. Amen. So if you're if you're dealing with unforgiveness today and, struggling with betrayal or somebody that just completely just wronged you uh, directly or indirectly, it, that bitterness and that, that root of bitterness is only going to destroy you. And the first thing you need to do is, is like one saying, to get along with God and, and start asking Him to help you. Um, I keep going back to 1 John 1, 9. That's one of my favorite scriptures. It says, if you confess your sins... He is faithful and just to forgive you, give you of your sins and cleanse you from all right. So we can't cleanse ourselves. That's right. Only the blood of Jesus. No. Yeah. And he can also in that vein put a good Christian person yeah. in your life to walk with you. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's done that with me. It's, you and I have had some of that back and forth. Yep. That has helped each other along the way. Amen. Um, so he uses people. But... You know, don't don't listen to someone that doesn't show you God's way with it. Right. You know, not, a, not a selfish way, but God's way. Yeah, I agree. All right, guys, we thank you for joining us uh, for this podcast, and uh, we ask you to please uh, let your friends know that we're on here. We're just trying to uh, shine light on issues of, of our day uh, with the Scripture. Because if it's not the Bible, it's not going to amount to anything anyway. My good friend Warren Hill here today, and I'm going to ask him as a way of dismissing uh, the, would you pray sure. pray for maybe yeah. someone that's watching today struggling with that yeah. Father we just thank you for this opportunity to share your word and I pray Lord that we've said what's right about you and uh, I pray for uh, the, the folks that are listening today that someone may be like I've struggled like David struggled Lord, or maybe they're struggling a whole different way Lord, we're each are different but I pray for those that may be struggling with forgiveness or unforgiveness or wanting forgiveness for most of all, Lord, I pray that if anybody doesn't know you, that they would surrender their life to you and receive your forgiveness. And then help them as they go on their life and mature them, Lord. And Father, please guide us and direct us and draw us closer to you. And Lord, help us in our walk today, Lord. Every one of us needs it, Lord. Maybe there's somebody out there this morning that's just hanging on by a thread. And uh, I just pray that you'll intervene and help that person, Lord, or persons, whoever it may be. Lord, we love you, we appreciate your love, and we thank you for what you've done for everybody. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Just keeping it real.